Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to celebrate this third Sunday of Lent. To prepare ourselves to gather around the table of the Lord, let's look back on the week, and for those times we need the Lord's mercy and forgiveness, let's ask Him now for that mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting and prayer and thanksgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that, he turned aside to see. God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Then he said, Do not come near. Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Then the Lord said, I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the sons of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the sons of Israel. I am has sent me to you. 
God also said to Moses, Say this to the sons of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord Lord is is compassionate compassionate and gracious. The Lord does just deeds, gives full justice to all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord Lord is is compassionate compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong his mercy for those who fear him. The Lord Lord is compassionate compassionate and gracious. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same supernatural food, and all drank the same supernatural drink. For they drank from the supernatural rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things are warnings for us not to desire evil as they did, nor grumble as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as a warning, but they were written down for our instruction, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Repent, says the Lord, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There were some present at that very time who told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered thus? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. For those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. He said to the vine dresser, Behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Let it alone, sir, this year also, till I dig about it and put on manure. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I 
I want to invite you to recall a moment in your own life when perhaps you, because of something that happened, because of some failure, because of some circumstance, you wanted to give up on yourself, perhaps on others, or maybe even on God. Maybe recall a moment where you felt deflated and wondered what the point of your life is. All of us at some stage in our lives, it seems to me, go through those kinds of moments. We feel that we've let ourselves down, that we've let others down, that we have even let God down. In that first reading, we hear about Moses, who is looking after his father-in-law's sheep. Moses was trapped in his anger about what was happening to his people in Egypt. And so he murders an Egyptian, that well-known story. He's a murderer on the run, and now he finds himself working for his father-in-law. Some people tell me that can be quite deflating. I wonder if Moses had given up on himself. This man who had so much promise because of what had happened perhaps gave up. Perhaps he felt deflated. And in the gospel we have that parable of the owner of the vineyard who wants to give up on that tree that will not produce fruit, that barren fig tree. And he tells the gardener, get rid of this tree. It's of no use to me. Give up on this tree. Cut it down. The gardener is a little bit more wise than the owner of the vineyard. And you know, friends, isn't that the Christian story in so many ways? The story of people who had let themselves down, perhaps let others down, even let God down, feeling barren, feeling like they had nothing to offer. And yet, when God begins to work, things change. Think of St. Paul. Think of St. Augustine. Think of St. Francis of Assisi or St. Ignatius Loyola. Those who were considered barren somehow were able to change completely and bring about a fruitfulness that was never expected. I want to suggest to you today that we are invited to do three things. It seems to me that Lent is a time in which we are invited to look at ourselves very carefully, to look at perhaps what we are tempted to give up on, most particularly in ourselves, others, and maybe even God. Maybe we have already given up. Or perhaps we are feeling deflated and we are asked to look at why we are feeling deflated. It could be an experience of something gone wrong, a relationship that has failed. Perhaps a job that has gone wrong. Maybe your hopes have been dashed because because something happened. It seems to me that today's scriptures are inviting us to look at ourselves through the lens of patience and leniency. That we are invited to be more lenient with ourselves and more lenient with others. And maybe that's an invitation in this time of Lent. Consider where you might need to be more patient and more gentle with yourself. So often, our relationships with ourselves and others and God are determined about what is going on, our perception of ourselves. And so, at times, we need to be more patient with ourselves. Notice something else. 
Moses, in the midst of his troubles, visits this desert. And in this desert, he visits a holy place. And in a way, Lent is our holy place. It's the place that we are invited to come into. It is the bush in our own lives that will help us live through and experience something different. Moses in the desert discovers God's love burning in him in a new way. Something he had lost, or perhaps something that because of his experience he had given up on. In that ordinary bush, in those ordinary circumstances, God, through that bush, brings Moses into a new relationship with himself, with others, and with God. Moses hears those words from God, and this murderer on the run is given a second chance. And I wonder in this time of Lent, if we can move into that holy space, that holy place, and allow ourselves to hear God speaking to us. Allow ourselves to once again feel that fire of God's love burning within us. Notice how Moses was not determined by his past, by what had happened to him, but rather God is a God of the future. And the third thing to notice is that encounter at the bush. Notice how God launches Moses into a new mission. Notice how that encounter between the owner and the gardener gives the fig tree a second chance. If we actively and intentionally seek God in this time of Lent, if we seek an encounter with God, if we go to that holy place, to that bush in our own lives, we too may hear God calling us to something new. We too may hear God offering us a second chance. I wonder today if you can give up on those things that you allow yourself to be burdened with from the past and focus rather on the future and the God of second chances. So let's now together make a profession of faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word, and now let's bring our prayers, our needs, before our God of mercy and compassion. For all those who feel like giving up, or who feel deflated about life, that through the power of God's Spirit, they may come to experience and know the God of second chances. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For parents and teachers, that they may be patient and encouraging towards young people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Christians during this time of Lent, that we, through our almsgiving, prayer and fasting, 
would prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Lord's passion, death and resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered to pray today, that we might heed Jesus' call to repentance and show the fruits of repentance by a new way of living. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders, that they may see the earth as a gift from God and take good care of its fragile environment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are suffering with their mental health at this time, that we would learn to be compassionate and listen to their struggles, and that they would learn to be patient with themselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accepts the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, by whom we live all the God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings. And grant that we who ask pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. In the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's pray together. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in God of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Jesus.